piano's gonna echo too. Echo on the piano. 
Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. Oh, I worship. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship. 
So I love you more than anything. Good morning, good morning, good morning. morning. Welcome to the Craig Memorial Community Church. So very glad you joined us on today, on this day fifth Sunday in May, where we celebrate Memorial Day, which is tomorrow, which is a holiday in the United States of America. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. If you're a continuing member or friend, welcome again. Just have a few announcements. Uh, we continue to extend our condolences to the family of Sister Doris Rollins, who was funeralized on yesterday. Uh, so please keep the family in your prayers, as well as Ronald and Terry Jackson, the loss of his mother and her mother-in-law. We do have a card here from the family of Doris Rollins. Thank you so much, Pastor Walker and Craig Moore Community Church family. We sincerely appreciate your thoughts, prayers, and kindness in the time of our loss. Your expressions of love is overwhelming. May God continue to bless you and have been blessing. You have been a blessing to our family. For the time you give, the hearts you warm, the smiles you make, you are appreciated. And this is from the family of Sister Doris Rollins. Please keep the sick and shut in in your prayers. Uh, Deacon Jones and others who are in the hospital, they are standing in need of your prayer. So please, if you know the word of prayer, just call out their names in your time of prayer that they may, God may intervene on their behalf and restore them according to his will. Up. To members of Craig Moore Community Church, upcoming church meeting is going to be June the 8th, June the 19th. You must register on the website by the 18th. This is if you want to attend the church meeting by, via Zoom. Please call the church office and register by June the 18th. The department heads and ministry heads who have to issue their reports, uh, if you can and you've been vaccinated and your desire, we would like to have you here to present your reports in the sanctuary. If you cannot make it to the sanctuary to give your report, please let 
uh, Sister Terry Jackson know so we can make other arrangements for you. But our preference is that those of you who are department heads, you get six feet social distance and everything, that you will give your reports here at the church. June the 19th is our first church meeting of this year as we discuss the business of this branch of Zion. Last year in December, we had it via WebEx. Uh, this time we'll be doing via Zoom. It was very productive, very helpful, and it did go very well. Uh, we're looking to do the same this year. So those of you who want to register for the church meeting, please call the church office 301-772-3812 and register for the church meeting by June the 18th. Uh, also, AB Volunteers. Uh, we really would love to have you come volunteer. Uh, if those of you who need have volunteered, please call Minister Coates uh, to be able to volunteer at the church meeting. We have migrated to Zoom, and I did miss that one. We migrated to Zoom. Uh, though your number is here, if you can hear me now, if you are on Zoom, thank you for joining us. Uh, we will have prayer meeting and Bible study and other meetings via Zoom now, which we've switched platforms. So if you can hear me now, you've actually successfully done it. <laughs> uh, if you need some instructions, we'll be able to help you in the future. All right, so you're giving. If you desire to give to the Craig Moore Community Church, there are three ways to give. You can cash up us, you can call Brother Fred Smith, or you can mail your check in to the church location. We're so very glad to have your generous tithes and offerings and your gifts to our visitors and friends. Thank you for supporting the ministry with your hard-earned money, even during this time of pandemic. All right. Second to the last, it is Memorial Day. We want to have a moment of silence for those soldiers who have died on the battlefield defending our country and those who have served Craig Memorial very diligently. Uh, on this particular day, uh, who served Craig Moore very diligently. We'd like to honor them on Memorial Day. Uh, for, unfortunately, these three individuals' names I will mention are all from the same family. Uh, our former trustee chairman, Donald Childress, our deacon, Dolores Levi, and our former church clerk, Doris Rollins. So let's take a moment of silence to honor these individuals and the, honor, and the servicemen who have given their lives for our country. Amen. That concludes our announcements for today. Uh, one other thing to Betty Winchester, to Al Purvis, and to Heaven Kennard. Pastor just wants to wish you a very happy birthday. That's all the announcements I have for today at the next election. The next voice you will hear will be a matter of my own that will come back and give you the message for today. God bless you.
Time for the Word of God for the people of God. If you have your Bibles with you, you want to turn to two passages of Scripture that are in the book of Proverbs. The first one being Proverbs chapter number 11, verse number 2, and the second being Proverbs 16, verse number 18. And there you will find these words in the New International Version of the Bible from 1984. Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 2 says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but humility comes wisdom. Proverbs 16, verse number 18, 
It says, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Just like to use a very simple, and I guess lately it's been my <laughs> custom, one word title, pride. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for who you are and all that you've done. We ask, Father God, that you search our hearts. And this lesson will be a lesson for us, not only just today, but for a lifetime. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here's a dichotomy with some words and some actions and some emotions that we experience within ourselves. Something can be both good and it can be bad. It is possible that it can have a positive connotation and a negative one also. It can be both good and bad in the same mannerism or feeling. Today we look at an emotion that is good but also can be bad, and that emotion is pride. This emotion is one of the sins that summarizes all sins. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. From the beginning, it was regarded as a problem. Yet in other cases, it's beneficial and it reflects appreciation. While it can be problematic and reflect that a person is full of themselves and have an unrealistic view of themselves and who they really are, it can also reflect one that has a value in what God has given them and the talent he's allowed them to have. It can reflect one, on one hand, it can prohibit one from apologizing. On the other hand, it can show value and appreciation. On one hand, it makes men think that they're better than other men uh, who have less than they do because you're full of yourself because you have a couple of dollars or maybe because you went to school, maybe the education you have, and now you're full of yourself. That is regarded as the bad part of pride. It makes a bench player on a championship team thinks he's better than one on a starter on a losing team. Can you imagine that? They start, they're good enough to start, but you're way deep on the bench and you think they're better than they are because of the other players on your team. It could make a Fortune 500 manager think he's better than his peers who work at smaller firms and even though it was his resume and he gets himself all puffed up and think he's all suchy much and thinks he's so special just for the firm that he works for knowing that he had nothing to do with their success. It makes you arrogant, it makes you cocky, and it makes you feel with self-reliance. It makes you think that you are greater than what you are and the Bible always teaches us that each of us should think of no, not think more highly of ourselves. Humility is the key. I got some other ones that are a little problematic when we think about pride. It makes a woman feel she's smarter and better than a man just because of her gender. Sister girl, just because you're a woman doesn't mean you're smart and all smarter than all men. It makes one wife feel she's superior to another because of her husband's position at work. It makes some people who are white collar workers look down on blue collar workers and think they're better than they are just because they have an office with a window. It's so problematic, it makes fair-skinned people look down on darker-skinned people and make sure, makes them think that they're more attractive and maybe their personality is better just because of the pigmentation of their skin. It makes people who live in cities better than people who live in the country and tell them they're backwoods and they're backwards and they don't know how to do things and they don't live in the city. It makes suburban people think they're better than people who live in the inner city. It's pride makes whites feel better than they're better than people of color just because of the fact that they've been in charge of this country for many years. But let me just tell you, you keep on living and you'll find out God has a way of humbling everybody. It makes you celebrate the demise of others and feel as though they're not as good as you and you say they're going to get what they deserve, yet you don't even look at the fact that you're going to get what you deserve as if you were perfect right out of the gate. 
Yes, it makes you uh, commit the sin of judgment, judging others and, and speaking of their own condemnation and ignoring your own. Let me take a deep di deeper dive into that. That just means that you look at what others messed up and you say, oh, God's going to get them. And when they hurt your feelings, when they do something wrong, oh, God's going to get them. They deserve punishment. You're angry and mean-spirited toward them. But guess what, sister, girl, and brother man? You have sins of your own that you're going to have to be held accountable for. That same judgment, that same condemnation, that same desire to see someone punished will fall on you just like you wanted it to fall on someone else because of your foolish pride. Yet, on the other hand, you do your best just because you know God is watching. You perform your best because God is watching. You show God you appreciate the car and the home that he's given you by keeping it clean. Not that you're looking at someone else or comparing your house to someone else's house, but you desire to show God that you're grateful for what he's given you by taking care of it. As there is a thin line between love and hate, there's a thin line between the good and the bad form of pride but it makes you show your very best to God because you appreciate all of his blessings. And even though you know you don't deserve it, none of us deserves the favor that God has given us. None of us deserves the houses that we live in, the clothes that we wear or the money in our bank account. We have not been that good. Yet everyone goes around thinking that I have this and I have that and oh, I, I'm, I'm better than they are because I have these short term material blessings. And when I say short term, it's just that because most of us know that I can remember. And this is a funny thing. I was uh, looking at the uh, HGTV one morning and it was had this beach house and some of the rooms had a flat screen TV and other ones had a tube TV. And the funny thing about it is one day you thought the tube TV was a be all or end all. And because you had a tube TV, you were doing something great. And now all of a sudden flat screen TVs come out and your old TV that you love so much is outdated. And that's why I say they're temporary blessings because one day they're the best thing since sliced bread and then give it two or three years and it's old and outdated and you'll be ashamed that you owned it. It's pride. Pride is a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievement, the achievement of those whom one is closely associated with or qualities or possessions that are widely admired. That is your pride. Yet even though it is a good emotion, it can also be misdirected and problematic. So as we dive into our text, we find the proverb written by Solomon, who was one of the wisest men that ever lived, if not the wisest men that ever lived. And he recognized and realizes in chapter number 11 that when pride comes, then comes disgrace. When pride comes in, when your self-assurance and self-reliance comes in, then disgrace is right around the corner. It says here, but humility comes before wisdom. Pride is this. It is, it is, it is, it is, if we look at it, it becomes haughtiness, as the Bible says, and arrogance. It represents that pride that is out of control. Haughtiness and arrogance is the feeling that you're better than someone else, and you look down on them, and the Bible teaches us that God hates haughtiness and pridefulness. He can't stand the fact that you feel that you're superior to someone else based on some accomplishments or things that you have. Guess what? If God's grace and mercy allowed you to have it, if God gets upset, God can take it away tomorrow. Then where would your arrogance and haughtiness be? What would your arrogance be based on when you had that highfalutin job at that great company? You were making great money and then you found out the company president was stealing funds and the company goes under, where will your arrogance be then? So then God has to bring arrogance down by humbling the person. He says, but humility comes, but comes with wisdom. In other words, if you recognize who you really are and that you could not and would not be anything without the Lord, you would then humble yourself and then he would not have to humble you through circumstances and situations. He has to let you know that he did it and you did not do it by yourself. He has to let you know that you should be humble and lowly. And when you're humble and lowly, you get wisdom because you realize that life is filled with swift transitions. 
that one day you're up and one day you're down. One day you're the, you're the specimen of healthiness and the other day you're in the hospital with tubes in your nostrils. Things can change right away. One day you're riding high and one day you're on top of the world and the next day all of a sudden everything could change. And God hates our pride and arrogance because it's all based on temporary things and none of them has to do with him. Proverbs 16, verse number 18, says that God, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Those who think too highly of themselves and look down on others with contempt and wanting their destruction, of destruction will follow them. Destruction comes before and after your arrogance and your haughty mindset. A haughty and an arrogant spirit proceeds a fall. Meaning that all of a sudden, when you started thinking more highly of yourself, all of a sudden now God has a, a way of dealing with you and your fall is imminent, even though you don't see it coming. We get full of ourselves and as my mom would say, you get your butt on your shoulders. Get high minded. Thinking that you're the be all to end all. <laughs> if I may borrow a few phrases. I've seen it happen all the time where people thought that they were on top and they were planning everyone else's demise and little did they know that they got that one phone call and they were toppled from their higher heights and lost their position. And they thought they were so special and they were riding high one moment making plans for everybody else and did not know that same fate they were planning for someone else fell on them. How humbling it is before we have, we get prideful. How humbling it is. God just desires to say, nobody's going to be greater than me. And no one's going to think they're so awesome. And no one's going to think they're so great because of themselves. He has to show us, even in his great love for us, that you took a fall because you did not do it on your own. No president of a company, no president of a country is great all by themselves. They're only as great as the people who support them and great as the people of that nation and greater, they'll never be greater than the God that allowed them to be in the position in the first place. And if you've been hanging around for, oh, four years, <laughs> you've seen it happen on election day. Amen, somebody. So now as we look at this, pride comes before a fall, so we have to get rid of our arrogance and our high-minded attitude because if we do not, we will fall. And a haughty spirit will cause us to fall, an arrogant spirit that there's an air about us that we just think we're better than everybody else and we have to go on flowery beds of ease and we get the red carpet rolled out for us but no one else can touch us and we can't sit by people. We don't want to apologize to people because they're all beneath us. Because unfortunately, we put ourselves on a level we don't belong on. That's the bad part of pride, the destructive part of pride, when it seeps into arrogance, where we start to be full of ourselves because of what we have or what we've done or what we achieved or what we accomplished, which it is fleeting. And the funny thing about pride is we always compare ourselves to those who have not achieved what we achieved. But what about those who have achieved more? We don't look down on them. We look down on those who don't have as much as we do. We look down on those who we think we're better than, but yet we'll always be looking up on people who have done more and have more. But then Paul addresses the good kind of pride, the pride that we should have, the pride that is not problematic, and the pride that exists before you cross the line. And he says in Galatians chapter 6, verses 4 and 5, Galatians chapter 6, verses 4 and 5, a letter he wrote to the church at Galatia that was founded in his first missionary journey. Each one should test his own actions. In other words, look at yourself. Test your own actions. Look at your motives. Look at the reasons why you do what you do. And look at what you have. Then take pride in himself. Take pride confident. Look at your achievements and look at these achievements and say, you've done this and you've done that. Then uh, he can take pride in 
himself, and there's a comma there because there's another thought without comparing himself to somebody else. The standard is Jesus Christ. That is the standard that exists in the Bible for all of us. The standard of living is Jesus Christ. And if you're striving to be Christ-like, you take pride in yourself, but you do not compare yourself to anyone else. I can't compare myself to Martin Luther King, T.D. Jakes, Noel Jones, Marvin Sapp, any other popular preachers who travel the world who have larger platforms than I. I can only be happy in the stage I am in then maybe in my humble state, God will exalt me. But if I exalt myself and think I'm better, even though I'm not on the stage as others, then I will have to be humble. But I take pride in myself and the, the achievements that I have, not comparing myself to anybody else. Why? Because there are those who have done less, but there are those who've done more. I consider myself in the middle. Yes, I'm more fortunate than some, but less fortunate than others. I can't be arrogant around the people I'm more fortunate than and then look silly around those who I'm less fortunate in. I'm not less than they are and I'm not more than the other group. I'm not more than those who have less and less than those who have more. But I can't compare myself to anyone because once you start comparing yourself against those who have more, less you look good, but those who have more, you look silly. Keep yourself in the middle. Be proud of your own achievements. Let me give you an idea. One day you were a liar. You were a thief. You were doing all kinds of stuff. And then Jesus came into your heart and changed you. So now you could take pride in yourself because you have grown spiritually, not compared to anyone else in the church, but just according to yourself. You've made progress. You're better than you were before better than you were yesterday. You're doing better than you ever have been done before, but do not go around comparing yourself to your brother or your sister. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing better than my brother, and I'm, I'm doing better than my sister. Yes, but you got two cousins that are doing twice as good as you. And now at the family reunion, because you make more than everybody else in your family put together and your aunt and her little small house in North Carolina that you could put in your living room, now you think you're so big and so much and so this, but God could take it in a moment. So keep that house clean and keep that yard nice and keep your car washed, not to compare yourself to your neighbor, but just be glad for the piece of earth God allowed you to live. If others come by and look around at your house and mm, nice house, hope you can keep it clean with the grace and mercy of God, with the strength he gives me. Yes, I can. Because guess what? I'm not comparing myself to anybody else. I'm happy for where I am, who I am, and where God is taking me, not comparing myself to anybody else. Paul had it right. Take pride in yourself. For each one has to carry their own load. You have your own load to carry, meaning that you have to stand and on the judgment seat of God and stand for yourself. Those who have more can't speak for you, and those who have less can't speak with you. And God's not going to grade it on a curve. Well, you did better than these, but not as good as these, so I'm going to give you an A. No, he looks at you under the standard of what you learned, how you grew, the word of God that you mastered or that you knew about, and if you're... Uh, mastering these things, that is what your judgment is based on. He's not going to look at the person beside you and say, oh, well, you did better than they did, so you can come in and that person goes out. That's not how God does it. His judgments are fair. You have to carry your own load and be who you are on your own. Stand on your 10 toes or on your own square and nobody else's. You can't look at your neighbor and say, I wasn't as bad as they were, God. Why are you mad at me? No, you didn't master the word of God that you were supposed to learn at the time I gave you. So now it doesn't matter who did more or who did less. You have to stand on your own and carry your own load. So take pride in yourself, not comparing yourself to anyone else. Second Corinthians chapter four, says seven, verse number four, second Corinthians chapter four, seven, verse number four. He says, I have great confidence in you and I take pride in you. I'm greatly encouraged in all our troubles. My joy know no bounds. Now, what Paul is doing here now is he's taking pride. He's bragging. He has confidence in the Corinthian church. 
He's seen their growth. He's seen their obedience. And now he's going around saying that this church in Corinth is doing well. Not comparing it to Galatia, not uh, any other church that he's comparing it to or Colossae or anywhere else or Philippi. He's just saying, hey, church of Corinth, you're making progress. You're doing well. I am proud of you. And I tell other people about your love. That church in Corinth is great. That church in Capitol Heights is great. They're, they may not be the largest church in the area, but hey, they're on YouTube and they're on Facebook and they're on uh, Zoom and they got these great platforms. And yes, other churches may have this and they have that, but guess what? Craig Memorial is doing the very best that they can with the resources they have. And that's all God's going to ask us to do. It's not asking us to be greater than someone else, asking us to be greater than the church around the corner or the church up the street. God desires for Craig to be Craig and as great as he allows it to be and the people will work hard to make it and do well as well as we're doing now, we can take pride in that in the good way. That God has been good to us and God has blessed us and God has allowed us still to broadcast even during a pandemic. Some churches have folded up, but we don't think we're better than they are. We're just trying to be who we are. And some churches have gotten thousands of new members. We're not there, but guess what? We're doing as well as God desires for us to do. We're still online. We're still blessing people. And we're still here to minister to people every week, doing the best we can, not comparing ourselves to anyone else. And as a pastor, proud of them, not comparing us to the church around the corner, but proud that we have done the very best we could with what we had. And that's a sense of pride. That made Paul happy with the Church of Corinth, and it makes me happy to be in leadership at Craig Memorial because we're doing the best that we can with what we have and the resources we can afford to have, and we've done a very good job, not comparing us to someone else, but based on what I see and what we've done, we have done an outstanding job, and that's pride. So it has not crossed the line because we're not comparing ourselves. We're just happy for where we are Yet, we still have some way to go. We still can grow, but we have made progress. And that causes us to be proud. I'm going to end on this note here that Luke chapter 18, verses 10 through 14, uh, really is a blessing to us. And this is a story that Jesus is using to see the justification of two individuals. Luke chapter 18, verses 10 through 14, and I'll read it very quickly. Two men up to went to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like these other men, robbers and evildoers and adulterer and even a tax collector like this one. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you, that man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. Before everyone who exalts himself will be humble, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. And the premise of that whole story is the Pharisee compared himself to the tax collector and thought he was better because he was not a tax collector, he was not adulterer, he was not an evildoer, and he was not a scheming tax collector, so that made him holy. And he fasted twice a week and gave a tenth of everything he had, so that made him special. He obeyed this law, and yet he compared himself to other evildoers as if there was no evil in his own heart. He compared himself to the tax collectors who were swindlers and collected more than they were supposed to, just like this tax collector over here. I am better than he is, God, so I am therefore justified. I am holier because I'm not like him. All the tax collector did, beat his breast. God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I'm not comparing myself to this Pharisee. I'm not comparing myself to anyone else who's here. I'm just going to put my head down and ask God to forgive me. Who was more justified? 
the tax collector. Because his pride did not make him think he was better than anybody else. But the pride of the Pharisee made him think that because he was not like others, he was somehow better. Pastor, what are you telling us? What's the purpose of this lesson in pride and all these one-word titles? There'll come a day when the pandemic is over. There'll come a day when you'll be back in the sanctuary again, breathing through a mask, smelling your breakfast maybe, don't know. There'll come a time when you're back here and you're singing again and congregating again and filled with pride. Don't think the enemy is going to leave you alone when you come back and say, oh, okay, I'm not going to mess with them anymore. They got enough to worry about with the COVID. They got enough to worry about with the pandemic. And now I'm going to give them a break because they've been inside so long. They need a break. He's not going to let up on you. and He's going to stir up those feelings of pride inside of you. And the only way you're going to be healed and fix that pride is to go home and look in the mirror and take a realistic look at yourself. Look at all that you have, all that you obtained, all the little trinkets that are all around your house and the new car in the garage or the freshly paved driveway, the flowers in your garden and the fact that your yard is much well kept than your neighbors. You keep your yard up to brag, to show everybody in the neighborhood you got the best lawn in the neighborhood, or do you do it out of your appreciation to God? It's evaluation time. Look at your heart and find out that when you get dressed on Sunday morning, do you go with an air of overconfidence, or do you go showing God, thank you for the garments that you've given me. I'm going to iron them. I'm going to press them. I'm going to shine them. Not so I can think I'm better than anybody else, but just to show my gratitude to you for what you've given me. So to show God how much you appreciate that car, you clean the car, you fix the car, you, you clean the tires, you spend a couple of hours showing it, not to go around driving saying, look at me. But thank you, God, for what you've given me. Your house is clean. You have new furniture and you've done all these wonderful paint projects and everything else. And you've done this and you've done that. And you replace this, you replace that just so you can say, God, I thank you. This is my appreciation for what you've given me. Or are you inviting everybody over just to showcase what you have to make them feel small or to exalt you as being something great? And when they tell you how nice your place is, and when they tell you how wonderful your car is, and when they tell you how proud of their achievements you are, if you do not give reflection, glory, and honor back to God, you're filled with pride. Brag on your children, brag on your job, and brag on your career. You had nothing to do with any of those things because it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you? Get rid of the pride and turn your pride into praise. Turn your pride into appreciation. Turn your pride into humility and realize if it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? There's also a form of pride that'll allow you not to apologize and allow you not to receive a savior that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world and he died, he hung on an old ragged cross for sins of you and I, but yet your pride will prevent you from coming to him because you figure you're good all by yourself. But there'll come a day of judgment when God come, he comes back and we stand before him. The only question, the, the main focus will be then, did you know Jesus Christ and a part of your sins? And what did you do with the life he had given you? So if you're here and you're under the sound of my voice and you've never accepted Jesus Christ and your pride is telling you, I can't do that. I'm good all by myself. You're not. Because if you don't have Jesus, you really don't have much. So as you stand, as you sit, as you're about to take another sip of your coffee, remember this. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have anything. 
And if you haven't accepted him because you say, Pastor, I'm good all by myself, don't let that pride stop you from receiving the Savior, who is Jesus the Christ. If today is that day where you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, say, I'm going to swallow my pride. I'm not going to be filled with pride. I'm not going to say I'm better. I don't need him because you do need him. If this is you, you can drop us a comment in the comment section on Zoom or on Facebook or even on YouTube. What we want to know is that you gave your life to Christ today, that you swallowed your pride and your indifference, that you thought you were this and that. But honey, the day is coming when you will be humbled and you realize how great you are not. It's just as simple as asking him to come into your heart. Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart, make me brand new and change my life. If you desire to be a part of Craig Moore Community Church Ministry, you can let us know online as well. Or if we were a blessing to you today and that you really need to work on your pride. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies that allow us to be alive one more day. We thank you so much, Father God, because we know if it was not for you on our side, where would we be? So help us, Lord God, in this time where you loved us so much, you gave your only begotten son and your son sent a comforter to us on the day of Pentecost to, to be our comforter, to be our guide and to be our leader. So give us a portion, God, another portion of your Holy Spirit that convicts us of the pride in our hearts. That we won't think we're better than we really are. That we'll be humble and realize that we're not so much without you. That we're not so great without your grace and your mercy. That the only reason why we live in the United States of America or the country or the communities we live in is only by the grace of God and not because we pre-planned it ourselves even before we were born. We had nothing to do with our situations, our circumstances, but God, you've been so awesome and you've been so good. So God, we swallow our pride and we don't care how we look and we don't care uh, how what others may think of us. We need you, God, each and every day and each and every way. We need you in our homes. We need you in our jobs. We need you in the car. We need you as we walk along the road. We need you every day and in every way. God, we need you. And help us, Father God, because you hate pride and you hate haughtiness and you hate arrogance. So you want we don't want to be on the side of your hate. We want to be on the side of your love. So look deep within us and reveal those things to us that are prideful, that we may get rid of them and live according to a humble spirit and a realistic view of ourselves. God, touch our hearts, minds, souls, and spirits in the days to come. That even as we gather together once again, as a dray draws near where the mandate will be lifted and we'll be able to come together again, help us leave pride at the door. And matter of fact, help us leave pride at home. And matter of fact, let the pride at home be thrown into the trash and taken to the county landfill, never to return to our homes again. That we look at ourselves in a humble way, that we are who we are only because of you. So because of our pride, God, help us to swallow our pride and be filled with praise. Praise for who you are. Praise for all that you've done. Praise for your loving kindness. Praise for your tender mercy. Praise for all the achievements and accomplishments that you allowed us to have, even on the short cycle of life that we have on this, in this world, God. Help us not to think that we're greater, but help us to think that you are great and we're awesome only because of you. That our goodness is because of you. That anything we achieve is because of you. Our brain, our thoughts, our understandings, and anything that we have in us is only because of you. So this we give you praise, glory, and honor. And we honor you for every talent, every gift, every achievement, every material possession, everything we bought, financed, or paid off. God, we give you glory for all of it because you deserve it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. within me bless
Thank you for joining us today. We're so very glad you joined us on this fifth Sunday, the final Sunday in the month of May. Also, I know tomorrow's Memorial Day, so spend some time and take some time thanking God for those who sacrificed their life for this country. Well, that's the message on pride. I hope it was a blessing to you, and I hope that in the days to come, you analyze and evaluate yourself, that you reflect the praise onto God and not on yourself. Because you didn't make yourself, didn't have anything to do with the country you were born in. Uh, yes, you thought it was your resume, but it was only the grace and mercy of God in which we have what we have. So if you celebrate a birthday in the month of May, happy birthday to you. And have a great and awesome day. And remember, Jesus is Lord. I'm going to leave you with this one. I thought it was a funny that I heard this week. So here it is. A daughter was in the house with her mother. And she looked at her mother and said, hey, mom. Can I get $20? Mother looked at her and she said, girl, what you think I am, made of money? She said, isn't that what mom stands for? Made of money? <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs>